Okay, the three options we have is uh, Thinker, extremely intelligent, very bad with people, knows interesting facts, and comes up with original ideas. Very psychological, a magnetic personality, but unstable, might begin to lose his mind. Extremely physical, interacts with the world through his body, gets things done, but dumb as a rock. I really like sensitive. What happens if we uh, create our own? Just random. I do want to do an actual one. Let's 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 be sensitive. I'm a sensitive caring person. <clears throat> the Furies are at home in the water. It is their dress. If the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. Simply keep non existing? No idea how much time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. This is great! Yes, it is. Give me some more. You got it, sweet brother. Give me some nothing more. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. I know you do, baby. I know. Coming right up, sir. Smooth passage. Orleans. Uh, let's go. All right. Nothing town to fuck all, Barra. <laughs> let's visit the ancient zero sure zero home. It has always been like this, and it always will. Don't stop, keep singing, singing the song of death. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. I just want to see what all the buttons do. You can take it. You're a champion. Mother, help me. There's a head touch my neck, and I'm in it. Stop. I don't want to hear anything more about this sensation. To me back to the formless disembodied nothing. No, I'm not scared. I am a champion. A stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. Who am I? What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. What do I see? What do I fucking see? Ah, oh. here's our hero. 
An ugly little sap. God, that bottom left is terrifying. Uh, what do I got going on? Let's get a shirt. Let's <laughs> go blazer, is that what I said? Cheap bottle in the bathtub, beer, wine, and sweet liqueurs. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. Ooh. With a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. How do you con Suddenly, just con you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there underneath the soft vapor? Really? <laughs> Nothing? No, no that's all. Let's wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror, abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. I don't care. Behold. Uh -huh. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Um. Uh. This is the face of a late state alcoholic. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh, wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I have no idea why it's there. It's just. Yes. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. <laughs> no. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? I think it's supposed to look suggestive. It's meant for ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something machine would say. <laughs> One second. I'm gonna put some socks on. My feet are fucking freezing. I'm also gonna put a sweatshirt on because it's cold. But like not too cold. This is my classic sweatshirt. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Um, I'm insinuating that I'm very sympathetic. I think it has some sort of pulling it off too in a sad has been kind of way. There is some charm to it. There might have been 10 years ago. It's little more than a cadaverous spasm now. This is white check. You may retry it. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. Dig deep into your mind to look at the source of the expression. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna check the controls. Yeah, cool, quick save. I'm gonna turn down the voice over volume one. D 
This maximum size bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Oh, let's get some. Yeah. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. Grab the tie. You reach out to grab the tie, but what's this? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. Grab your chest. This is bad. Feels like sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you from moving. For quite a long time. Oh my god. Still ongoing. Now is a good time to start worrying. Finally, the pressure recedes. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move, hoping it will keep you from dying. Pull on the, the fan. The come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. <laughs> it's just a little hangover induced photosensitivity. Don't overreact. Bring it on. Two black spots dance on your retinas. It's almost pleasurable. Oh, my the lights mind. are off again. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. stands broken in its frame cold wind blows in assess the damage what do you mean assess the damage how would you do that what are you even trying to do okay fine i'll look out light hurts your eyes it's hazy but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings the morning light hurts The fan stands still. Do I have both shoes on? Not the right way to go. Hmm. 
slow, officer. Connor says March, the year is 51. Fossil's twelve center the hall. Oh shit. I wanna to talk to the girl first. Raises a cigarette to her lips. Uh, no. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Then why do you have an officer? Because you're a police officer, sir. Are you sure? I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days on official police business. Okay. All this time? And what business is that? Say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Um. <laughs> No. No. Try the expression on her. Let her know that you want her physically. No. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Goodbye. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray, light it up, and smoke the living shit out of it. The what now? The living shit. Your mesolimbic reward pathway does not mince words. It wants smokes. Nice smoker. Who knows what you are? A monster. A murderer. The gnome of Jeroma. You feel like a smoker. Especially <clears throat> Juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub, still smoldering deliciously. She broke it out of the filter. I can't smoke that. Very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that. A carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied. Then smoke them all. The idea seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Or you could not do that. No one is making you. I should not do that. Good. They'll make you stronger and better. You're too old to be cool now. But find cigarettes. Smoke them. Blam. Instantly a cool renegade. Oh not not do that. Oh my god. Cool red dragon with smoke rising from his nostrils. <sighs> Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. I wanna try to be a good cop. Trumpet let them all.
You should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Of course, at this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. Through a PA system. By other people. Whether they like it or not. Ram it up their ears, says your pineal <coughs> gland. Violently express yourself. You have not yet stumbled <coughs> <to> right <coughs> into the But it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. I was thinking maybe it's just things make me happy. Give people go on. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Sing the sad song. It's profound. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. Okay. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. Look at that stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it most likely on a wall. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Actually, listen to this. Beep boop. Because then you guys can read as well. There you go. Over to the bird. Look. Your buddy is over there. Up, oh, he points. To, he locks to the doors where the man is. The bomber dragon is tapping his foot on the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him? Okay. I'm a cop, and I doubt whoever I please. He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Yes, you are. A real decorated hero. What did I do? What did you not do? First, you took the body down. Then you solved the murder. Then you didn't trash my hostel room. Maybe you even negotiated the strike. Oh my god, I did all those things? No, you see, actually, you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. What have you been doing around then? Have you seen me around? No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. Okay. Hello, sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleagues waiting. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. 
If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this. Why? Shake his hand. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Low. Um. Boom. Raphael Ambrosius Gusto. <laughs> it's very cool, but when I come up a douche, I call myself that. You instinctively run your hand over the multi patterned silk of your tie. Its slickness gives you comfort and reassurance. Don't worry! Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau is one classy name for one classy cop. My name is Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. Yes, well. It looks like we had a little skidding error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? You mean him? Not I just talked to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is all back, right? <clears throat> Uh, right, it yeah. So wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here, in full force. I mean, have you mapped out the initial interviews? Um. Yes, the police. I'm aware of I'm a policeman. Um, I haven't. Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? No. So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Well, yeah, let's get going then. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Yeah, wait, should I have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? It was on me when I woke up. Using your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Stop fucking throwing rocks, dude. Kuno's got this. Oh yeah, not a comfy Kuno. Hey kid, a word, please put this. Sweating profusely, his eyes are like two black holes, and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Stop throwing rocks at my camp scene. Kuno, yeah, right in the, mouth hole. they pay you no heed, 
or pretend not to notice you. Shit himself. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. Look, I have questions for you. Alright, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. The body, what do you know about it? Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Uh. He's choking. He's totally choking. Damn, help me out here. What do you want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. You have no idea what the usual is. Just ask whatever comes to mind. Have you seen anyone that's suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. Faggoty? Uh, do you know who he was? Kuno's fucking. Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. End of conversation. Very strong. You should be this stoic. Probably clowned. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see that happening? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. Where did you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... Mesk or, or, I don't know, some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. Where's Night City? Kuno gives this info out on a need to know basis, and you don't need to know. Kuno didn't smoke the gimp, if that's what you meant. Looks like someone else. Not testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost! Got out. Who's Kuno? Kuno's Kuno pig. Kuno, primal, violent. Kuno sounds like something you'd call a rabbit dog. Yeah, think about it. Think about that rabbit Kuno shit. <laughs> God, you're a piece of shit. Someone understood what he was going for. But right as he's getting distracted, you hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's going to put his hands on you! Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! Help! He's got the Kuno! Help! I'm just gonna leave. Yeah, get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you. Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. Don't listen. Just go. Just go. Oops, looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Lay down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Look over your nose without throwing up. As you breathe in, the <gasps> odor comes over you. Oh my god! The smell of the mind telling you to run, and your stomach I actually succeeded. Yourself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Did they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. 
The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Uh, first, let's select the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. What kind of boots are these? They are armor, no boots. Technically speaking, these are sabatons. Okay, what kind of armor is this? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Under the heel. Fairweather. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. What about the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. We should keep a lookup for these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. If you wear those pieces, it will help me protect your mortal coil. <sighs> Maybe he was just wearing these boots and there was no rest of the armor. Why does my moral coil need protecting? Yes, bullets will fly. They will. <sighs> and the coil is fleshy and mush and permeable. Cast it in ceramic shell. Resist death. Maybe he was just wearing these boots and there's no rest of armor? He must have worn something precious underneath his clothes. They have removed all his clothes to get to it. They did not just strip him for the putrid rags. Hmm. What are they told to strip him before they hung him to demean him? They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre, the Mazda, the Besmerti, and the like. This one still has his underpants. <laughs> Fucking talking about underpants. It really looks at a place here. It is. It's expensive. <laughs> We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. What are you talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Hmm. Touching, maybe? It's a lot of ticket. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. Look at this man such a for it's such expensive foot hardware. It's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the <sighs> hardware company. But that's just hearsay. <laughs> you look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Suddenly, your biceps coil up. Your elbow is sharp and cocked for a punch. Punch harder. Your fist connects to the boot with the same ding. The sound does not appear to get louder. Did you hear that? A click? Yes, sounds like dice are rolling. This is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads the incoming energy horizontally from plate to plate. When the plates connect, there's a click. That's the sound you heard. See these lines? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. Pull a bit off. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? 
Better not even try. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form, ageless and synthetic. Back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Let's pick the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Oh my, there's something on the belt. A familiar word that speaks to the thirst within you. Is that a word? Vermilion, in yellow letters, along the length of the twisting cargo belt. Only a deep longing for Vermilion Golden Spirits lets you decipher the fading logo of the local brewery. This is a bad time for a drink, right? Extremely. Can I possess? Industrial strength. You can use for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a circus. When the circus leaves town, and they tie a black spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pin. Like in a circus for transporting black spotted giraffes? Uh, no, more like in uh, harbor. Like the one just east of here. I get a sense they used whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. How did they even get them up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt, buckle closes. It's what I would do. Seems easier than climbing up there. They wanted to, sure wanted to stay up there. Police system really sure. Polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. We're suing dock workers from the harbor, did it? The brief suggested as much. Politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get a briefing? No, they must have forgotten to brief me. Then you should ask me the first moment we get. Okay. Look at the the cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. In the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Underneath the curb of meat, there is an expression, not carried on his features, but below, inside, an expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. Tell me, who are you, dead man? I'm gone. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. In the past, way out in the west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. <laughs> There's 
There's nothing funny about you. There is nothing funny about jokes either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Takes one to know one. Go ahead, Papa. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your imagination. Yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copper Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Yeah, give me comic kill amount of questions. Coming right up. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Why am I, where's my name, Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Of course not. The name is Raphael Ambrosius Costo. Listen to yourself. You're not a Raphael anything. You're probably just Harry or something. That's right. Harry. I feel like I've been getting a lot of Harry recently. Can I really be Harry? You can be anything you want. Rather, Copo. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who kills you? Love did me in, Brother Copo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face, motions, looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? I don't have anything else to do. This case is all I have. I am all you have. Then you truly lost it all, brother. Let the world drag it all away from you. And what it left, you pissed away. And here we are. I hate you. <laughs> Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. So you're feeling a sexual arousal when they hang you? Do I look like an erotic auto asphyxiation type to you? Yes. Captain Copadromo. I fear we are drifting away. Fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. I hate you. You're stinking. You're boring. Do I remind you of someone? You don't remind me of anyone. Sure I do. You just don't want to admit it. Do I remind you of someone? Myself in the bathroom there mirror. There you go. Look at that bright kid. We're birds of a feather, you and I. Soon you will be just like me. Just keep drinking and having a good time. It's a matter of weeks. Feeling nausea, vomiting, tenderness or pain around the liver area, tiny red lines on the skin above waist level, more like days, Coppo. The clock is ticking. Your liver tells you so. Enough. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. 
Your fist clenches suddenly. It will be riddled with disco. Decay is creeping on the tattoo. Already, most of the canvas that's holding it has darkened. Now, it disintegrates slowly, letting out a stink. Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century machinery, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized. <laughs> As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. Mm, this is on the air. So am I. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. The tent work. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound. A shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Cool machine. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? What do you need the photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later with the corpse. Huh? Sure. Just don't lose it. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by. His mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic <sighs> organisms. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by going to the interact tab in your inventory. Okay, I'm gonna take a piss.